Well, good evening. My name is Kalen Fretz, and I do want to be your next U.S. Congressman. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I'll just uh, reiterate. I know some of you were, were here for the candidate forum, so you, you kind of met me and saw me then. But uh, I'm a Christian, small business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I know a lot of this people, a lot of the people in this audience are, are you know, the same way or, or have been uh, business owners and you, and you have children who are business owners. And um, so I, I understand the, the struggles that the business owners are going through right now. Uh, you know, we were just talking about the, the regulatory burden, burden in this country is terrible at this point. Um, my goal is to restore the Constitution. It sounds simple, but uh, obviously it's, it's been a, a big problem in this country for the past hundred years, uh, if not more. Now, I agree with uh, the gentleman that said that Obama has to go. That's obvious. He, he has to go. <laughs> but just in case he doesn't, and that is a possibility that we, ha that we have to consider, you need an, insur an insurance policy in Congress, and that's why I'm here. Now. We have to fight back against the establishment, and that's both parties. You know, obviously there are establishment people in the Republican Party. My opponent is one of those. Jeff Miller, uh, you know, many, you guys are shaking your heads. You, you know about Jeff Miller. Um, now, I believe in liberty. I believe in uh, the things that made this country great. And uh, we're, we're not on that path right now. I believe in natural rights and the, the fact that you are born with unalienable rights that no one can take away from you. But the Constitution doesn't give you those rights. It doesn't guarantee those rights. It only recognizes those rights. You have to guarantee those rights. And you do that at the ballot box. You do that by educating people. You do, do that by getting out the vote. And you have to pass this down through the generations where liberty gets lost. And that's where we're at that point right now. Now, the number one issue that I see is the national debt. We just passed 16 trillion. Everyone in this, in this room owes tens of thousands of dollars uh, you know, in debt as, as a result of, of uh, you know, 16 trillion dollars in debt. Children are born, in, born into this uh, country, $50,000 in debt now. $50,000 in debt. How are they ever supposed to pay that off? And it's devaluing everyone's way of life. It makes your, your purchasing power of your dollar cheaper Okay. Now, one way to fix that, one way to work towards a solution is to require a balanced budget. Now, this is plain, plain uh, common sense. You know, 49 out of 50 states require a balanced budget. Uh, you know, you're required to balance your budget, balance your, your uh, checkbook at home. Why isn't our federal government doing that? Why are we constantly running deficits? We're borrowing at a rate, I think the last, the last number I saw, $40,000 per second. Okay. That's insane. Now we have to audit the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve does all, basically prints money in the cover of night. Um, they, they don't allow congressional oversight, even though the Constitution delegates the power of uh, the money power to Congress. Congress gave that power away and said, we don't want to take care of it. We'll give it to this, to this other uh, you know, organization and, and they can do what they want. We won't have oversight over them. That has to change. And part of the problem is fractional reserve banking, where the Federal Reserve is allowed to delegate money out, and, and it creates this bubble where they're, they're leveraging you know, 10 times more. People are shaking their heads. You guys know this. I, I know you're, you're tea, tea Party guys, so you, you know all this stuff. Um, but but they're, they're create, they create inflation, um, and, and then the bubbles pop. And that's what led to the housing crisis, uh, along with some other things, basically all government uh, intervention. Um, now, we have to stop the banker bailouts like TARP. That's, that's obvious. $700 billion. That money, instead of going to the banks, if we were really going to, to do something for the people, could have just been used to purchase the mortgages that were, that were owed to the banks. You know, that would have been much better than, than giving all the money to the banks and saying, you still owe them, plus you have to pay off that $700 billion. Now, in reality, none of that should happen, but at least you know, let's, let's look at it from a, from a, a perspective of things that would help the people. Um, but really, the, the government just needs to get out of that completely. Stop bailing out banks. Stop bailing out corporations. On that note, we have to end corporate welfare. Government continues to pick winners and losers in the market. 
and uh, you know uh, when when tax breaks are given to certain corporations or certain industries that's a that's the the same uh, thing that's cor that's corporate welfare going to one industry or another we have to end that bad risk has to be penalized and not propped up and that's the problem with the banks it's the problem with many other corporations right now we have to eliminate the progressive income tax we need to go uh, back to where we were 100 years ago before the, the income tax was created. And that was uh, a uh, system of uh, tariffs and uh, sales taxes. Uh, really, the fair tax is, is what I support. The fair tax is a, a very obvious solution. If you haven't uh, looked into it, I would ask you to do so. That's one thing that I would really uh, want to get out in front of the American people you know, if and when I'm elected. Uh, is, is that we have to get away from this income tax full of loopholes, the IRS coming, harassing people. When, when you have a, a sales tax, you see how much you're being taxed right there on the bill. And that's when people are gonna, really going to start paying attention and say we have to lower the amount of money that government's taken from us. Now, we have to su stop supporting monopolies in the housing and education industries. Uh, we have the uh, the No Child Left Behinds and the, the Goals 2000s and all these, uh, you know, uh, education mandates that, that many of them come from the UN, as a matter of fact, and, and they're passed down into, uh, you know, the Department of Education and then filtered down into your local schools. Now, why is the federal government involved in, in local education in the first place? That is something that, you know, 100 years ago, local and, and private uh, entities were involved in, and our education was number one in all the categories. Since the government became involved, we've gone down to 20, 30, 50 in the world. Uh, government involvement is what is killing our education in this country. Um, government makes the economy worse. Anytime that they get involved, and this goes back to, to what I was just saying, anytime the government gets involved, the, the natural uh, market of things uh, you know, gets, out of, gets out of whack. Prices become inflated. And so we have to get government out of the economy. Now we have to fix the underlying problem in the healthcare system. The underlying problem in the healthcare system is government intervention. Government regulations create monopolies. Government regulations are written many times by the, the uh, corporations that they're supposed to regulate. So we have, uh, you know, healthcare regulations written by the healthcare industry to keep uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs out of the market so that they can inflate their prices. At the same time, you know, they 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 uh, say that the government has to guarantee healthcare. That's what Obamacare is, right? Guaranteed healthcare. Obviously, any time that, that something is guaranteed, the prices are uh, naturally going to rise because they don't have to worry about scarcity. They don't have to worry about anybody that's not going to, to, to buy their health care program. And that's why you know, uh, health costs in this country are rising at a rate around, I think, 10% per year. And that's an exponential curve. In the next five to 10 years, that's going to be, the, the United States is going to be spending more on health care than it even takes in. Okay, that can't happen. So we have to do something about it, and the answer is we have to get government out of it, return to a system of private charities and churches and, and families uh, helping people get through hard times instead of always relying on the government. Decentralization and individual responsibility creates economic stability. So the less we are all concentrated on the national economy, you know, if we were instead, let's, let's consider if we had 50 economies, if we had Florida's economy and Alabama's economy. Well, if one state was having a bad economy, that wouldn't necessarily mean that the other states were having a bad economy. But when we have a national economy, then the whole thing rises and falls at the same rate. And that's, that's not how our, our, our constitutional you know, system of government was intended to, to be run. Government should not own businesses and it should not grant favors. It can't create jobs. Only people and individuals can create jobs. Real competition is the best regulator. And we, uh, you know, somebody else mentioned uh, the, the uh, land grabs from the UN. Uh, we, we have to protect private property from UN and federal land grabs, and that is a very real threat. Agenda 21, I'm sure many of you are familiar with, is that exact thing. 
uh, and, and a lot of those decrees come down from the UN and to the, uh, you know, the, f the federal government, to the state government, to the local government, and they are land grabs. So we have to, we have to protect against that. Now, I believe that if, if you defend natural rights, if you defend your liberties, which are, like, like I said, recognized in the Constitution, but they're your natural rights, then everything else falls into place. And we have to protect gun rights. Gun right, the, the, the First Amendment is arguably the most important, but the Second Amendment's there just to back it up. Okay? Now, the, the Constitution says that we have a natural right to, to, to own and carry firearms. Why do you have to get a permit from your government Amen. to do something that the Constitution says that you're, you can do because you're a free individual? Okay? We have to stop giving illegal power to the president. This is happening over and over and over again. If you've heard of a, a bill called the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, it was passed last year, I think, for the first time. Uh, it was reauthorized again this year. What it does is gives President Obama and, or any president that comes after him that could potentially be many times worse the power to indefinitely detain American citizens without due process, without the guarantee of a trial. This is so utterly perpendicular to our Constitution, to, to the, the Fourth and Fifth Amendments that, that guarantee you, uh, you know, the right to due process, the right to a jury trial. They can come and whisk you away in the middle of the night and disappear you. And this is what happens in third world, or third world countries. Uh, you know, people disappear and are never heard from again because they're political enemies of the president or, or whoever else. Now, there have already been concerns about the possibility of, of this already, you know, having occurred. Uh, there was a man in, in Virginia who, who was taken away by, by the, uh, the, federal uh, the FBI, a medical facility, for a while until somebody raised a big fuss in the national media and, and then you know they, they had to let him out. But if, if nobody raises a fuss, these things are just going to happen and happen and, and, and our rights are being weathered away. Uh, we have to end the TSA abuse. Uh, the, the, the TSA at the airports, you know, as a condition of travel, you have to be, uh, you have to go through a, a naked body scanner and be seen naked by uh, government bureaucrats, and if you refuse to, that, to do that, you have to be groped by government bureaucrats. <laughs> now, uh, I like the that <laughs> I, we, we have to do that. We have to tell, tell it like it is. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> but we, we are not supposed to have to, to be searched and, and be, uh, you know, touched physically just as a condition of travel. That is not what this country is about, okay? We, we in this country are, are willing to take risks sometimes in order to pres preserve our liberties because liberty is more important than, than no, you know, you, you could be thrown into a jail in, in a cage and you, you'll be guaranteed to be safe, but you won't be free, Okay? Now we have to make the government transparent, not private lives. The government constantly wants to get involved in your private life. <laughs> I apologies. Uh, I apologize. Uh, we have to get the government out of out of private lives. We, uh, individuals, not government, de determine voluntary relationships and their own bodies. Okay, the the government doesn't tell you what you can eat. Okay, it doesn't tell. Well, it does tell you that. It's not supposed to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Now, I'll just take a, a moment here in the middle to tell you, the incumbent, my, my opponent, uh, has voted for policies that have progressed all, almost, if not all, of these things that I've just talked about. Okay. Now, you, you, need, you, you have to strongly consider if your best interests are at heart, from somebody that is, is willing to violate your, your liberties as recognized in the Constitution, who's willing to heap tens of thousands of dollars in debt on you personally and trillions of dollars, five trillion dollars uh, since, since he took office that he's voted for in new debt in this country, okay? More than five trillion, two trillion last year. Now, we have to respect our military and our veterans by respecting what they fought for. 
they fought for freedom. They fought for what made this country great, and that was individual responsibility. That was, uh, you know, b being separate from government, relying on ourselves and our family. Uh, we have to protect the, con the contractual obligations that we owe them, that we told them that, that you know, we would guarantee when they, uh, you know, s chose to serve. Now, Jeff Miller voted for the, in the uh, $2 trillion debt limit increase, he voted for uh, the super committee, which did not uh, come to a resolution and therefore put into place sequestration. Now, Jeff Miller is now complaining that sequestration will affect veterans and military. <laughs> but he voted for the bill that put into place sequestration. Now, what Congress's job is, is they as a whole, not a body of 12 people out of Congress, they as a whole are to determine how the money is spent, where cuts are made. They don't say a body of 12 people gets to decide, you know, we're going to cut veterans uh, uh, benefits or, or whatever we guaranteed them. So, so this is the problem is, uh, you know, government creates these problems and then says, oh, we'll jump in and, create, and, and find a solution for you real quick. Well, don't create the problems in the first place. Uh, now, we need to bring our troops home to, pr to protect our own borders. Uh, we have illegal immigrants coming across this nation, uh, you know, every day by, by, the, by the hundreds. And our, our economic system is set up so these illegal immigrants, uh, illegal immigrants automatically get, you know, all these rights, economic benefits, benefits that you and I don't get. But they don't have a social security card, so, that, so they automatically get, uh, you know, uh, uh, taken care of in the hospitals and they get free education and uh, lots of times free housing. This can be stopped if we stop, cut off the problem at the source, which is stop letting these illegal immigrants into our country. Our, if, if our nation is, is deteriorating, it, the number one reason is economically. That's how all great nations have fallen, is economically. So we have to stop providing these, be these so-called benefits to, to people who don't even pay into the system. And, and we do that by stopping at, at the root, putting our military on the border and defending our own borders, which is a prime responsibility of our federal government under the Constitution. Now we have to move towards energy independence. That goes right in hand with what I just said. We, we, President Obama has vetoed this, this uh, energy pipeline you know, or, or, or threatens to, ve to veto it and, and doesn't want us to move towards energy independence. Why is the federal government in charge of whether or not we can drill in our, in our states or local properties? We need to get back to our local system of government, allow uh, you know, the state of, of, of North Dakota to decide for themselves if they will build a pipeline in their country or, or in their state and if they will drill for oil in their state. It, you know, the, our, our Congress and especially our president has no say on the matter, but, uh, but as we know, our, our federal government doesn't really like the Constitution these days. Um, we also need to allow greater competition in energy production. We do this by stopping subsidies and by deregulating, uh, just, like, just like for uh, housing and, and education. We have all these regulations that are written by the industry and then they, they keep uh, entrepreneurs, they, they keep uh, you know, competitors out of the system. That's why you know, oil prices and gas prices continue to rise, and they will continue to rise until we start getting the federal government out of, of, of the uh, industry and start letting private businesses take care of these issues on their own. We also have to end foreign welfare. Now, I remember in a debate a, a, a few uh, months ago, someone said that, we needed to take foreign aid back to, to zero at the beginning of every year and then decide from that point on, you know, which countries should get how much welfare. Well, I say we need to take foreign aid back to zero and keep it there forever. Our Constitution gives no allowances for us to, to be sending billions of our dollars, our taxpayer dollars, to other countries, many of whom w we uh, consider enemies of this country. Okay? And lastly, I would just ask you, what veteran, and I, I know there are veterans in this room, what veteran fought for massive debt, less liberties, and endless war? Not one. Now, we need one rule of law for everyone. 
big businesses and you and I. We, you know, John Corzine, if any of you have, have heard of this, uh, you know, steals a billion dollars and gets a get out of jail free card. But if you sp steal a dollar, you know, off that table back there, you're gonna, you know, go to jail. Uh, so, so we have to start applying the law evenly. And where, where are our congressmen speaking out against, you know, this absurdity uh, of pe the people that run our financial system cause, you know, financial harm for, for people like you and I and families and, you know, cause their houses to, to, to disappear and, and, and their money, you know, their income to dry up. And these people get off scot-free. There's a big problem there. And, and, and our Congress is the entity that is supposed to enfor help enforce the law, create the laws to prevent these sort of things. Now, I also believe that we should realign the congressional income to the national incomes, uh, the, the, the national media, uh, <laughs> median income, excuse me. Uh, currently, congressmen make, I believe, over $180,000 a year. $174. dollars Okay, there you go. Well, plus perks. Okay, so, well, I, and office expenses are much, much more than that, obviously. Uh, okay, so they, they make 174000 They're They're invincible to the problems that, that, you know, the average family goes through, like you and I. Social security like we have to pay. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and, and. They pay social security. They pay social security. That's what this, this, yeah, they do. They do now. That's 1983. They pay it, but they get a lot more than we do, don't they? They have a that's right. And, and they're on a tiered plan. That, you know, the longer you stay in Congress, the more benefits you get. <laughs> so that's a problem, too. Uh, the, the, the whole idea of one rule for, for everyone, one law for, uh, law for everyone, goes for Congress, too. Okay? There, there's a saying, who watches the watchmen? And <laughs> that's right. The answer is we have to watch the watchmen. We need to send people into Congress who are going to stand up and say these things to the American people and in front of, you know, their colleagues there on, on the floor of the, of the Congress. Kaylin? Yes, sir. Forgive me for interrupting you, but we, we try to keep a fairly tight schedule here. Okay. And Am I running over? And, well, I can wrap it up here in a couple minutes if, okay, if that works like for you. you. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, I'll, two minutes, I'll wrap up. Uh, we have to completely end Congressional Insider Trading, which they have been uh, allowed to do for many years. We need to sunset federal laws and get laws off our registers. Now that's an idea that seems really simple and really obvious, but have you, have you heard any congressman talking about getting laws off our books that were created 200 years ago that are no longer applicable, but they find loopholes in, and that's why they're kept. They can't even talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, we have to term limit Congress. Absolutely. We need uh, those guys stay in there and get uh, absorbed into the system and lose all touch with, with people like I, you and I. I thought Kennedy was never going to leave. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he was rooted to that chair forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure he is. <laughs> now, that was, that was now I, I just want to say you're not being served by your current congressman. You're not being served by the system. Uh, your current congressman is establishment status quo. And uh, it's time to get some fresh ideas in there. It's time to go back to our Constitution, back to the ideas that made this country great. If anybody is interested, we're looking for uh, volunteers for the uh, NWF Fair and the Pensacola State Fair. If anybody's interested, you get free tickets to get in. Uh, there's some good stuff going on there, too. And uh, I'm always taking donations as well. <laughs> And uh, please check out my website, fretsforcongress.com, and I thank you very much for having me tonight. Hey, don't go away. We're not sure. All right. All right. Okay, Peter. You know, look, everybody stand up. Uh, and get a stretch, get a breather or something. It's a long time it's in the really city. Warm. And it's, yes, it's warm in here. Uh, Robert, I tried to turn you on the thermostat, uh, but it didn't work very well. If you have a question to ask, Kalen, you know, go ahead. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where do you stand on 
gay marriage? And where does the Libertarian Party stand on gay marriage? Are you personally? Sure. Uh, same question on abortion? Sure. And then, are you, uh, Thank you, sir. Question, Appreciate that. Are you a viable candidate? And, and by that, I mean. It's a, no, that's a fair question. I, I'm concerned Absolutely. about the parole effect. <coughs> if we vote for you, we may end up with the Democratic candidate. Well, I'll. I'll, I'll start with your last question first. Uh, the, there is a Democratic candidate in this race. His name is Jim Bryan, and he has not been campaigning. Uh, he, I, I don't expect him to have hardly any, any effect on this race. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he ran for Congress last, uh, last election cycle and garnered 0.6% of the vote. So I do not expect him to... Uh, to, to take votes, uh, you know, to, to basically do what you said, have the pro effect. Uh, and, and, and I really see this race right now as being between Miller and myself. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Miller wouldn't, wouldn't admit that, but I, I think he does realize that people are completely fed up with what he's been doing in there for the past 10 years, and they're ready for someone that's going to get back to the Constitution and be a bulldog in Congress for the American people and for the people of, of this first district. Uh, the, the topic of gay marriage. I believe that uh, the federal government has no involvement in, in defining marriage. The federal government should stay out of the issue completely and let the, uh, the Constitution just basically plain and simple has, says nothing about the federal government's involvement in defining marriage. It's a private and church institution. Okay, do we agree on that? And, and, uh, and if anybody should, should be involved, it should be the states. Now, I, 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 my personal belief is, is just like I said. I, I believe that the federal government should not be involved. Well, do you believe in abortion? Do I believe in abortion? Yes, sir. No, I, I don't believe in abortion, no. Do you support it? Would do you, you vote support for it? No, absolutely not. Do you support No, marriage? absolutely not, no, would no. Would you support it? No, no. Roe v. Wade was entirely a, a terrible ruling. It should never been, have been made at the federal level, and the federal government should, plain and simple, not be involved in these issues. Okay. Okay? The, now, I, I believe that if, if, we, had, if we were uh, uh, following the constitutional system, the state of Florida would overturn uh, you know, some, of, some of these problematic issues. But right now, where we have everything decided at the national level, there's no, there's no chance to do that. So, so people of this, of this state are overruled by the people of California or, or uh, Nevada or, or whoever, and that's not how it's meant to be, okay? No, Sir, I think you had a three-part question. If I'm well, mistaken. that was it. That was was that, did that I cover them all? That was did I cover it to your satisfaction? Okay. Dale, Get the federal government out of it. I got a question yes, sir. for you. There's an awful lot of uh, government agencies that I think we can do without. The number one on my list is the DOE. Absolutely. What's your thoughts about it? I, Absolutely. You know, they, were, they were founded before you were born, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, they've been around for a while. Of the energy crisis and we're going to change our energy independence. Of course, we're worse than we ever have been. Right. I think the budget's like twenty-two billion a year or something like that. It, it grows every year. That, that eight because eight because if something's dollars. failing, you just throw more money at it and then it'll be fixed, right? That's that's the right. Yeah. Exactly. No, I I absolutely believe that the federal uh, the the Department of Education should be abolished. Uh, if if Oh, Department of Energy. Yeah, but I agree with the education. Department. There, there are some, there are some issues under the Department of Energy that the federal government needs to be involved with. That should, in my opinion, be under the Depart Department of Defense. Um, but you know, the federal government should not, like I said, should not be involved in uh, determining things like this pipeline. It should not be involved in, uh, you know, dictating prices of power. Has anybody heard of this? These uh, smart meters. Yep. Yes. Okay. There's concern that when these smart meters are installed on your homes yes sir exactly. it is and 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 there's concern and and this will probably inevitably happen that they'll get these smart meters on your home and they can control your power from a central location and eventually when the federal government decides it will take over that smart meter that you know a power company or whatever and it will dictate to you how much power you can use every day if any so I would advise against, uh, you know, putting these sorts of systems on, on your home where, where central authorities or, you know, possibly government down the road, uh, you know, could dictate to you how to live. Um, but, yeah, the government should not be involved in, in energy. Okay. 
Or I may have a question for you. Yes, sir. So let's just, let's take a wild guess and you get elected, okay? You're That's the plan. 435. Right. How are you going to make a difference there? That's what I want to know. That's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, Give us a great answer. <laughs> the, the, the number one role that I see for myself getting into Congress is speaking to the American people and educating the American people because that's really where the power is and that's where the power has to be. I think that I would have crossover appeal to uh, the youth of our country who are, are the future. Uh, you know, right now they, they feel disillusioned by the, by the political system and why shouldn't they? You know, they, they are not, um, well, they're out of work. They're, they're, you know, they're basically perpetually uh, hurt by this, this federal system. And uh, so I would, I would want to uh, speak out to the American people, educate them on certain issues, just speak on the floor of the House, and, uh, and really call out the problems in Congress, call, call out the people in Congress that are, that are the problems if I have to do that. Um, and, and so that would be, you know, my primary, my so primary so involvement. Really and and office as a bully pulpit for the nation as a representative for the first district of Florida. I'm going to use it as a bully pulpit for the Constitution. Um, and, and, and I think there hasn't been enough Constitution talked about in, in our Congress. And, and that's what gives them the, the authority to, to, you know, be in our nation's capital representing us. So I would How use... representatives and for the Senate right. to abide by the Constitution of the United States and pull back its horns and bring it back to where it's supposed to be. Right. How are you going to do that besides talking and educating people? Well, I, I know for one thing I would do a much better job than anybody else in our Congress right now because they aren't even following the Constitution. So at least if you have one person that you can look to as an example and say, okay, this guy really is following the Constitution, we do have some hope for, for somebody that can truly represent us and do the right thing in Congress. And I think they'll, you know, I, I can lead by example and other people will follow. Because Ron Paul did that for 20 years, yeah. known as the congressman of no. Right. Okay. And, and his I number one. I agree with you, you know, but we need 400 of them. Uh, sure, absolutely. We need, if we had 400 people in Congress who just voted no on everything, we'd probably be in a lot better situation than we are right now. But one by hey, one. That's right. That's right. That's right. But two by two. Hey, one, one of the issues that he championed was the Federal Reserve System, which nobody knew about back in the 70s, and now it's a it's a it's a number one issue, and people are starting to wake up. So, and that is that really is at the core of the problems that we have in this country. Is, is an economic monetary banker system that is not for the American people. It's, it's for the profit, uh, for, for the benefit of a small group of, you know, elite people that we have nothing to do with. And so I do think that one person can absolutely make a difference by standing out against the crowd. And, uh, and, and following the Constitution is, is the number one priority. And I think that uh, other congressmen and women would follow my example. I, I certainly hope so. Yes, sir. How do you feel about term limits for congressmen? At, just... Absolutely for him. I actually like Florida's uh, system. The way Florida does it is uh, uh, Congress, uh, the House can do four consecutive terms, eight years, and then they have to take at least one uh, a term off. Senators can do two uh, terms of four years apiece, so they can do eight years as well. Then they have to take one year off. Now. If they were a great representative, after that, after they take that, you know, one term off, and the people really like to them, then they can choose to reelect them. But at least we get some turnover in there and get some fresh ideas and have some competition. You know, competition is a good thing in, in, in uh, you know, business, but we don't have any of it in our government. We just have a 95% reincumbency rate. That's why these people get ingrained in the system. We have to send new people to Congress with fresh ideas, like myself. Yes, sir. I'm for, I'm for putting them up for four years and sending them home forever. I'd be, I'd be fine with that, too. I'd vote for, if, if they did a two-year congressional term limits, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd vote for any congressional term limits because we need to uh, start getting some turnover and getting the incumbents out of there. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, I take oaths very seriously when a man and a woman in a marriage commitment stands before God and makes an oath to one another. Yes, sir. I take that very seriously. <clears throat> and I also take the oath that the president 
made on the steps of Congress Amen. with his hand on Amen. the Bible to protect this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I come from a military family. I've got a son in the military right now overseas that I cannot have contact with because of the nature of his operation. I've got a brother serving right, right alongside him probably. <laughs> now, <clears throat> my question is, why is not the Congress fully involved in the impeachment proceeding against Mr. Obama right now because we just had embassies breached. Yes, sir. <clears throat> when they breach an embassy, it's like they come over here and invade our own land. Yep. <clears throat> were, that, were I the commander in chief right now, the UN would be finding another home other than New York. Yep. Absolutely. And Egypt would be a smoldering pile of ruin right now. I mean, it's time, and the American people need to stand up to Congress and say, where are you at in this? Why is not this man being impeached right now? Because he swore to uphold and defend yes, he did. the Constitution, and he's not doing that. You're absolutely right. And, and, and that also goes to the Congress themselves. They, they <coughs> took an oath to, to, to obey, defend, and uphold the Constitution. And most of them aren't doing it either. So that's why they're not holding the president to the same uh, standard. You know, now, we do need people in there to go in and finally uphold the Constitution, uphold that oath. And I agree. Obama has absolutely violated his oath of office. Absolutely. Uh, as have many of our congressmen. They, they all have to go. We have to kick them all out. Uh, uh, as far as you know, the the acts that have taken place on our embassies, you're absolutely right. That was that was. Uh, it's it's just like if they you know came on our our own soil and, and did something here. And you know I've heard that actually it's it's come out that uh, you know our our uh, military that was defending those embassies wasn't even armed. Uh, you know. Um, had no weapons, right, weapons right. Loaded. Had no way to, to, to defend themselves or American property right there in a, in a very hostile situation. Um, so there, there are no doubt huge problems like that, in, you know, in Congress at the federal level. And I'm right there with you. Where are people to speak out against it? Where are people to, to hold President Obama accountable? And I know that there have been, you know, one or two. Uh, uh, there, was, there was one uh, gentleman from North Carolina, I believe, that... Uh, introduced the bill to impeach Obama uh, if he initiated another act of war without a declaration uh, of, uh, of war from, by the Congress. And that's, that's another thing. We've been at war for, for, for decades without a declaration of war. And that's a constitutional requirement. So when are we going to get back to following the Constitution? That's a recur recurring theme of mine. And it will be, you know, I'll take it straight into Congress and say, we have to declare war if we're going to be at war. And that's something that, that our, that's, we have a, a say in that, in that matter through our representatives. That's why it was, that power was given to the Congress, because they're the closest to the American people. You can go to your congressman and say, I'm against the war or I'm for the war, whatever. But your Congress has to declare a war. And if they don't, it's a violation of the Constitution. Yes, sir. Like the rest of the nation, there's too many fearful people. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. They do have the power. They just don't use it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, concerning that stuff that happened in, to the embassy and the ambassador getting killed, uh, Obama made a statement to the UN that said the future cannot belong to those that would slander the prophet of Islam. Yeah. Obama made this statement. I hadn't heard this. Okay. Interesting. I mean, it's, it's all over everywhere. Okay. But anyway, uh, and from what I'm understanding is Hillary Clinton, the UN, has got a bill in front of the Senate right now to make it illegal to say anything against the prophet. Really? Um, okay. And it went through the UN. Hillary Clinton has got it sitting in front of the Senate. And, you know, the people are saying it's not going to pass, but, you know, get some crisis happening. It might, you know, kind of coming up against the First Amendment. And it seems like, you know, just your statement, I'm a Christian, I'm running for Congress. Right. That, if things go the way it looks like it's kind of going, that would be kind of slandering Allah because he's not too fond of Christians. 
Right, right. And your stance on that. Well, I can only hope and pray that that doesn't pass because I do have a little bit of faith still in some of our Congress. I, I, you know, I, I do hope that they will see the light and do the right thing, um, but they continually refuse to do it. So there is a possibility that something like that would pass. It's a blatant violation of the First Amendment uh, and, and of your natural right to say whatever is on your mind. You know, as long as you're not, not threatening someone else's life and, and, you know, in, a, in a dire situation, uh, then you have the right to say you know, whatever you want to say. And so you can say whatever you want about the prophet or someone else's religion. And to be quite honest, they can say the same thing about your religion. And that's what makes this country great is you're allowed to say whatever is on your mind. And it doesn't, it, 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 no, no uh, holds barred. Really? How come we can't be politically correct then? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the right to do it. The government often violates your rights. And, well, you know, and the government's always talking about protecting you from other people violating your rights. That's yeah, not usually the, 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 the problem is government violating your rights. Exactly. And then, okay. Absolutely. Yes, sir. How can the uh, his presidential executive order be overturned? That's it. <laughs> New president's one way. Uh, but really, if you look at, at the history of executive orders for, for many, many decades, Presidents from both parties have issued executive orders, which you know, uh, uh, was, Clinton's was, Clinton's right hand man said, you know, stroke of the pen, law of the land. <laughs> that is utterly opposed to, to our constitutional system of government. The legislature writes the laws. That's it's in their name, legislature laws. Um, so executive orders were created to to say, you know, uh, tell the White House staff to wash, wash my laundry. Or, or something like that. It was not created to, to, for, for the executive to, to write laws and tell us what to do. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I believe that, uh, you know, the, the legislature can nullify those laws, and really states can nullify laws like that under the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. And, and, and that's one thing that, that people like yourselves have to look at is, is get your states involved and aware on these issues because states have uh, all the powers that aren't explicitly delegated to the federal government. Okay, so if it doesn't say it in the Constitution that the federal government has this power, your state can nullify anything that the, that the federal government says. How do we go about doing that? You have, to, you have to educate your representatives because most of them probably don't know. There's a process out there called nullification, and that is a topic that we can talk, talk about. about forever. Exactly. Not you forever, can. But we can do it. We can educate well, Why don't we start doing it? It's, it's, I, would, I would absolutely recommend looking into it and talking about it because, because you can. <laughs> You, you, your state can, can fight back against the federal government when it's, you know, putting its tyranny down your throat. Yes, sir. What's your take on the 17th Amendment? 17th Amendment was senators. Senators used to be elected by the state legislatures. So, and this goes to the, to the 9th and 10th Amendment. The, state, the states used to have a lot of power. That's, that's how our, our system of government was created, for the states to, ha to have the power and tell the federal government what to do. The state legislatures used to have control over our state senators. Uh, and, and so if, if the senators were doing something that negatively impacted the state of Florida, our state legislature could revoke them and appoint new senators. Now, and, and, and this is all about the, the system of states' rights. Now, they changed that to a democratic vote. And, uh, Are you in or out of favor for repeal? I would absolutely repeal the 17th Amendment. We need to return to a system of, of state control over the senators, and, and it's really it's, it's a system of checks and balances right there in, in our own uh, state because the people democratically elect our, our federal representatives in the House, but the state uh, elects the senators, and so there's a check and balance there. So, uh, so yes, I would absolutely repeal the 17th Amendment, return to control of the senators to the states, which is the constitutional form of, uh, of government that we were supposed to have in this country. The secret is to vote in the right uh, governor of each state. Well, govern governors are very important. States are very important. It's also very important to vote in a U.S. House of Representatives representative that's, that's going to represent you, uh, you know, according to the Constitution and according to what's best for you. And, and more, $5 trillion in new debt, not conservative. Not at all. So I would ask for your vote in November. I really thank you for, uh, for having me here.